I grew up in Washington, D.C., as stated before, and in the region that I very affectionately and lovingly came to know as Chocolate City is where two very powerful forces shaped how I look at the world, Star Wars and hip hop. <laughs> the saga of Star Wars taught me about the balance between good and bad energy, something we refer to as the force, an energy that flows through everyone and everything. And I began to realize that having an understanding of that energy and learning to manipulate it for good is essentially what we call the force. At the same time, hip hop was the soundtrack of my life. Old school artists like Public Enemy and Slick Rick spoke to me through lyrics that were both socially conscious and empowering. This music was not just entertainment to me, it was a call to action. It demonstrated that what we could do was uplift ourselves and our community through knowledge, unity, and the freedom of self-expression. So these two influences came together to shape my mission. I decided that what I would do <laughs> was harness the power of science and view it as today's modern day force. And through the work that we do, we can create these little Jedi temples of a sort and create future scientists who can use the force of science to do good, just like Luke Skywalker and the Jedi have done with the force. So while hip hop and Star Wars shaped my mission, hip hop also showed me that the innovation and the resilience of the hip hop culture mirrors exactly the type of qualities we need in the laboratory. If you think about the evolution of hip hop and how pioneers in this culture innovated and took what they had at their resources that were available to them and created a whole new type of art, a whole new type of music. Graffiti artists invented nozzles, little caps that were taken off of household aerosol cans and were used to create different spray patterns, allowing them to use brick walls as a canvas for self-expression. At the same time, DJs would take turntables and learn to manipulate music, creating new tracks, new sounds, and then a whole new genre of music. This was not about the individuals. This was about taking the resources that they had available and creating something new and amazing for the betterment of society and our communities. This mindset is the heartbeat of the Citizen Science Lab. When I created the Citizen Science Lab almost 10 years ago, I wanted to create something where you could just not learn science. I wanted to create a place that was sort of a studio of the sort a place where you can remix ideas, experiment, and learn about science using real science equipment and a real science laboratory. The Citizen Science Lab does not focus on lecturing or arts and crafts sciences. We focus on being able to bring anyone to the lab, whether you are a high school Padawan, right? or elementary school youngling, there is a space in the Citizen Science Lab for you to learn, explore, and discover something new. This work is very, very important. Because if we take a look at the long history of science in the US, we see that there have been barriers in the way for as long as it has existed. Many of you have probably never heard of Dr. Edward Boucher, the very first black person in the US to obtain a PhD in 1806 from Yale in physics. However, this brilliant man was not allowed to do anything but teach high school his entire career. For those who did make it into the research world, such as Dr. Ernest E. Juss, 
who again, many of you probably never even heard of unless you're one of the Divine Nine. Dr. Ernest E. Just was a research biologist, first black professor in the biology department at Howard University. He set the groundwork for what we know about sperm and egg fertilization. Yet you probably never heard his name. There is a publication that comes out pretty much annually. It's a census that's been conducted since 1957. It's a census of every research PhD doctorate degree that has been handed out or awarded in all of the US accredited institutions. The most recent publication in 2022 stated that over 57,000 PhDs have been awarded in the US. Yet when we break it down by demographics, which the second chart does here, the yellow line shows you that only 1,540 of those were awarded to African Americans. You are looking at a rare species. And so this work is important for us because we are here to break down those barriers. We are here to change those numbers. Because if you do the math, that turns out to 2.7% of PhDs held by African Americans. The Citizen Science Lab breaks down these barriers by making sure that we do not just teach science. We cultivate it. We culture it. We make sure that it's not something that for so long has been taught as something that you read and test about. Science is experimentation. It's exploring. It's something that you do. Imagine, just like the Jedi, being able to take things that are unseen and manipulate them for the better of good. Being able to manipulate these genes in an effort to save honeybees from colony collapse. Being able to walk into a lab as a teenager and harness the power of microbes that live in mud and build living batteries. This is the work of the Citizen Science Lab. For so long, science has been taught as this lecture-based sort of entity or subject. But when you break down the barriers and you bring kids into the lab, you show them that there is a pathway forward. Through our work, we are able to show Julianne that she can enroll in a dual MPH program at Temple University. We're able to show Cynthia that she can enroll in a PhD program in biomedical sciences at UNC Chapel Hill. We can show Taya that it is possible to get a full ride to Penn State and then go into a PhD engineering program. It is possible to show Aya that there is a path forward in environmental sciences. Our students are working hard to carve a path forward for themselves. And we're working hard to make sure that we're there for them, to support them all the way along the way. By investing in our youth, we are investing in our communities. We're investing in our future, and thereby investing in ourselves. That's why we do this work. Keeping it connected to the culture has always been important for us. It's why I name so many of my programs after old school artists like SWV, TLC, <laughs> right? BDP, and Ice-T. <laughs> These are not just names. These are paying homage to the creativity and the discovery that these pioneers of this culture that we celebrate every day have created and mirrors exactly the type of tenacity and engagement and thought process that we need in the lab. So what's next for us? Our future is really bright, and so is that of the young scientists that come through our door. They are ready to step into that future, creating a pathway for themselves, 
thereby creating a pathway for others to follow behind them. Thank you. <laughs>